This is Channel 5 News. In the headlines, parliamentary opposition leader pleads with Prime Minister's move to defer passing of amendments to election legislation. $7.2 million approved for overseas students' tuition fees and over $150,000 worth of hearing aids installed on Dominicans this week. I am Kenny Williams with the Channel 5 News. Back with the details after this. Welcome back. First up, opposition leader Lennox Linton has welcomed the decision by the Prime Minister to defer the reading of the bills to amend the Elections Act and Registration of Electors Act. The United Workers' Party called a news conference on Friday after the adjournment of Parliament Senadie. The parliamentary opposition welcomes government's decision to defer consideration of the bills to amend the electoral laws of Dominica brought before the May 23rd, 2017 meeting of the Parliament pending review and public consultation. This is the course of action that we recommended to the Prime Minister by letter dated the 18th of May, 2017, one day after receiving notice of the government's intention to enact the proposed amendments during the May 23rd, 2017 meeting. Linton explained that the opposition in its letter called for consultation on the proposed amendments. With regard to our May 18th letter, the Prime Minister responded through the Attorney General. The response dated May 22, 2017 was hand-delivered to the Leader of the Opposition during the May 23rd, 2017 sitting after the Leader of the Opposition moved a motion for the withdrawal of the bill, which motion was set aside by the Speaker in support of the Prime Minister. The Leader of the Opposition subsequently asked the Attorney General to request an audience with the PM, the Prime Minister. Nothing happened. Linton says the opposition had also written to the Electoral Commission last August to raise their concerns and to advise the body to guard against any attempt to amend specific provisions of these laws. Meantime, Finance Minister and Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt says he recently approved $7.2 million to pay tuition fees for Dominican students studying overseas. Mr. Skerritt wrapped up the debate on the supplementary estimates on Friday morning. He was at the time rebutting statements by opposition member of parliament, Joseph Isaac, who said that there was massive overspending in the supplementary estimates for July 2016 to April 2017. I just approved, Madam Speaker, as Minister of Finance, on a request from the Minister of Education, $7.2 million to pay for students studying overseas. $7.2 million, Madam Speaker. And that will come as a supplementary appropriation. And the next time, should we say to the students studying in the United States and UE and, and elsewhere that we should not pay for them because the budget is coming to an end? Wait for the next budget. We have, we have to pay. Skerritt explained that government will always have to respond to emergency needs that were not initially planned for in its national budget under the law, he says, makes provision for that. The drafters of the Constitution and the laws of Dominica recognize that you cannot hold the state into a straitjacket, that notwithstanding the fact that you have a budget, that there will always be need where you have to spend. And yes, we could have put $10 million for public support, and in the case we put 1.5, but if somebody comes to the government with an urgent medical condition, should we say to the person to wait for the new budget? You visit a home where an 83 year old lady is living, or a family of children and the homes are leaking, and the funds which parliament has already budgeted for has been consumed, should I say to them in the month of January to wait till August? You go to a community, before the budget, the road, was, the road was fine, rain came, it washed it away, 
Should we tell the farmers of Salisbury, Gomon, that um, wait for the new budget and don't, don't send the 400000 to them? In more news, opposition member of parliament for Rosa Central, Joseph Isaac, wants to make it clear that he supports the majority of the current government's social programs. Isaac told Parliament that the National Employment Programme is a good idea while still being critical about its administration. So we're not going to try to bring it down, but what we have said, Madam Speaker, you cannot, oh, and I, I want to go back to what Honorable Senator Isaac Baptist said, if you keep spending more money on that programme year by year and even overspending every time, it is saying that the private sector is not absorbing the employees. That is why you have to keep spending over and over, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would say, Madam Speaker, the Labour Party administration, led by the Honourable Roosevelt Skerritt, I would say, have done significant work in regards to the social programmes. So for that, I can say, and in, to some extent, I would say, in some instances, maybe even going too far. And we must, again, make them understand that we support most of the social programs. So when an elderly person comes for support, we have no problem with that, Madam Speaker. And it, is a, and, it, and it is a good move, Madam Speaker, when the Minister of Finance is doing such things. He also says his party does not condemn the Citizenship by Investment program. I would like the entire Dominican public to understand that the United Workers' Party has never condemned the citizenship by investment as an idea or a source of financing. We are no place on the record that what we have always said, that we have issues with the transparency, we have issues with the accountability, and also we had issues with the, the, the extent to which the, the due diligence process has been achieved by the government. And as the Prime Minister had said on, in some address, that he agreed that there is room for improvement. In other news, phase one of a $3.5 million project to develop Platma Pier for the resettlement of dislocated families from the Collio constituency is set to get underway soon. The community of Collio was among the hardest hit on the West Coast during Tropical Storm Erica, with almost 20 houses being severely affected. Parliamentary representative for the Collio constituency, Catherine Daniel, explained that 12 families were selected in the first instance from 146 applications for just over 20 available lots of land in Platma Pier. In the application, we had a lot of people who already own their properties. And so we had to go through this list to sift out as we go redefine so that we come down to that 30 people because we cannot service everyone who applied. And so it's to the most needy and to those who really want, need a shelter for themselves and their families. And so the process took a long time. The contract for infrastructure works on the Platma Pier housing development site was signed with contractor Holford Vidal on Friday. Mr. Vidal will be contracted for the sum of $720,125.04. The contract is supposed to last for about 16 weeks, which is approximately four months, and it will entail the construction of rigid pavement, which is commonly referred to as concrete roads, to the tune of about 1,675 feet. That will also be provided with concrete line drains. So for those of us who are familiar with the site, realize we have to undertake the necessary drainage work there for ensuring very safe and comfortable condition for us during the rainy period. Meantime, Minister for Housing, Reginald Austri, said the entire cost for resettling 12 families in Patma Pier would cost over $3 million. For the 12 families that will be relocated uh, in um, Platma Pier, will cost us in the region of some $3.5 million dollars worth of money. Um, the lots would be valued at about $162,000. Um, the infrastructure works, part of which we're saying here today, would cost in the region of some uh, $1 million, $1.7 million, $1.0 million. And um, on the construction of the houses there would have cost us some $2.3 uh, million. The infrastructure project, it will allow for the allocation of 30 housing lots, nine of which have already been used for the resettlement project with ADRA, and some for Petro Casas provided by the Venezuelan government, which are already on site. 
Ron Garth Jolly is facing a murder charge six days after Kent Lewis of Point Michelle was shot at an entertainment spot in Point Michelle. Jolly was formally read his charge when he was brought before a Rosal magistrate on Thursday. He was not allowed to plead as murder is an indictable offense. The matter was adjourned to September. Luis died at the Princess Margaret Hospital after sustaining a gunshot wound to the neck early last Saturday morning. You are watching Channel 5 News. When we return, we'll tell you which prominent businessman is on a Support Local Meat campaign. Thanks for staying tuned. The United States-based Starkey Hearing Foundation has invested over $150,000 in hearing aids for Dominicans across the seven health districts. The three-day mission, which ended on Friday, was possible through the collaborated efforts of the Rotary Club of Dominica and the Ministry of Health. The club introduced its program to Dominica in 2012, partnering first with Centers of Hearing Care from Ohio. However, in 2016, Rotary moved to Starkey Hearing Mission in order to have a wider reach among the population. Service Projects Coordinator for the Rotary Club, Marvelyn Birmingham, says the people of Dominica are receiving hearing aid at a significant reduction in cost to them. We must have placed over 79 hearing aids at a cost of almost like 2000 EC dollars per hearing aid. So to feed a person it would cost that much. We saw 64 in Portsmouth yesterday, but fitted 43 and provided 79 hearing aids. And today we have um, a little over 100 people who have been pre screened for the Rosal Center. And um, we expect to, um, to feed a number of them with hearing aids. Starkey's International Development Director for the Caribbean, Kirk Richards, says the foundation is looking forward to returning on an island and screening a wider cross-section of people. What I've noticed is that the people are very enthusiastic about getting hearing aids in Dominica, so it's been, it's been a good experience. The demographics right now we're seeing are, are, are the, the, the people 60 years or older, but again, through the, through the Ministry of Health and through the screening process, those are the ones that have been identified. In the future, we're hoping to get into the schools, deaf schools, to, to, to see who are the students that are, that are in need of our services. So this is just the beginning to, to, a lot, to, to a lot more to come, so we're really looking forward to working with the Rotary and working with the Ministry of Health to identify more patients for the future. Chief Medical Officer Dr. David Johnson while addressing a presentation ceremony on Friday to recognize the valuable contribution of Starkey said it has made numerous achievements to assist the hearing impaired on island. Since 2012 to 2015, some almost 1,000 patients um, uh, encountered have been recorded for, for this year in mission. And 443 year in age were fitted um, with little or absolutely no cause to, 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 the, to those patients. Um, during those missions, a number of training was also done for throughout the entire primary health care services, and a number of our, our nurses and primary health care providers um, have, been, have been trained over the years. Prominent businessman Emil Deputa is on a personal campaign to support job creation and growth in the local meat industry. He says that as of June 1, he will not be shopping or buying anything from any supermarket that does not sell any local meat. Deputa also says he will not eat at any local restaurant that does not offer local chicken or pork on their menu. He believes private sector associations, including the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce, could also take a similar stance. Because when I do something like that, I do am I helping? I don't just help in the farmers, because the farmer has children who go to school, who pay school fees, the farmer pays electricity, the farmer pays mapping, the farmer pays, you know, so many different things. So the money trickles down. So when I help that farmer, I in turn helping myself and helping you. These associations should be a little stronger. They should be a little more forceful. They should be doing what I am doing as far as I'm concerned, because if it, if it comes from an association or a group of people, it's a, a louder voice. Debuta says increased demand for local pork and poultry can also benefit all stakeholders. 
If I call the abattoir today and tell them, hey, I have um, 100 chickens or I have 500 chickens ready to go to the abattoir, they'll tell me, boy, um, maybe next week or whatever it is. Why is that? Because they're not selling as many as they should to, to these places. So there are a couple of supermarkets that, that sell the, the local chickens. Um, I can name two, I can name Witch Church and Astrophans, and then I've, I've already been told by Witch Church management if I could, and that is over, you know, if I can give them 50 chickens a day, they would buy it because it flies off the shelf. So if it flies off the shelf at Witch Church, why should the other supermarkets and shops not stock it? that you have a section that will see local chicken. We continue with this item where Venezuelan band Vocal Song has been named as the final act on the main stage of Jazz and Creole Festival's lineup. Petro Caribe is taking care of the band's travel expenses as it prepares for its first time gig on island. It's an opportunity for us to, to bring uh, this Venezuelan band Vocal Song, as Yarissa said, um, this is a, a band who has been performing in Venezuela and Latin America for more than 20 years and is going, I, I think it's a very good opportunity to bring it to Dominica. We in fact have been trying for a number of occasions to bring them but this finally is the opportunity and I know you will enjoy the performance they are going to have that date. They represent the instruments, they interpret the instruments by the voice. So um, in, in this scenario when you have jazz uh, uh, and Creole festival, they are trying to bring a very good um, performance and a very good surprise for you as Dominicans. They expect to bring some uh, of the jazz and mix and, and that blend with the local um, bouillon and uh, calypso and soca touch. <laughs> Well, that was vocal song of Venezuela, the fifth act for the June 4th Jazz and Creole event at Fort Shirley Cabrits. And in this last item, we can tell you that the Methodist Church Dominica Circuit is boasting of 230 years of ministry on island. The church launched a public exhibition on Wednesday, May 24, to coincide with Aldersgate Day, which marks the founding of John Wesley's ministry and the Methodist movement. We're celebrating a jubilee year, marking the establishment of Methodism in Dominica on the 5th of January, 1787. Um, so this is a year of celebration for us, and we have started a uh, a series of events. The exhibition is one of the highlights. The Methodist Church congregations in the Caribbean and Americas are also celebrating 50 years of autonomy. The exhibition at the UE Open Campus runs until June 7. It will then move on to Portsmouth and later Wesley. It depicts the history of Methodism, a history of its time on the Dominica, prominent Dominican Methodists among other highlights. Former Prime Minister Edison James, Calypso Monarch Caressa, and Junior Calypso Monarch the Irish Kid are among the prominent Methodists profile featured at the exhibition. That's news, sports highlights, next. First up in sports, 
There was one win and a draw in the Winwood Island Senior Men's Tournament on Friday. In the Dominica versus St. Lucia match, Dominica won by six wickets. Dominica batted first and scored 320 all out. Tyrone Teofield added 75, while Alec Athena supported with 66 and Vincent Luis, 54. Audi Alexander picked up four for 106. In reply, St. Lucia scored 218 in 52.3 overs. Tyre Gabriel smashed 103 for the visiting side. Liam Sebastian snatched an impressive 7 for 51 for Dominica. Following on, St. Lucia was bowled out for 204 with their highest scoring batsman being Audi Alexander's 53. In reply, Dominica scored 103 for 4 to win the match. Meantime, in the other game, Grenada and St. Vincent played to a draw. Grenada took first knock and was bowled out for 172. Ryan John had an unbeaten 52, Ronald Cato 45, and Rudolph Paul 23. Kenneth Demba took 5 for 35. In reply, St. Vincent scored 271 all out in 53.1 overs. Sonnel Ambrose 114, Asif Cooper 25, and Kenneth Demba 38. Daniel McDonald took three wickets for 63 runs. Grenada next at the crease scored 241 for six in 71 overs. Ryan John 60 not out. Rudolph Paul 38, Nicosi St. Hilaire 31. Kenneth Demba picked up three wickets for 54 runs. Meantime, the 2017 Fort Young Hotel Dominica Cricket Association Intermediate League continues on the weekend with five matches in three locations. At Soufrière on Saturday, Maho United will be looking for good performances when they come up against the Police Sports Club. Over at Botanic Gardens, Marino Evergreen Sports Club will come up against Ruben Bakery Christians. And Jay's Dubla United Sports Club and Northern Stars Sports Club will convene in Portsmouth for an exciting cricket match. The action spills over into Sunday, where Northern Stars Sports Club will do battle with Sajiko General Somerset Sports Club. And finally, it will be Point Michel Cricket Academy versus Galio Hurricanes at Botanic Gardens. All games begin at 10 a.m. Moving on to basketball, there were wins for Hurricanes and Old School in games played in the Division I League of the 2017 Floor DABA League on Thursday. In Game 1, Hurricanes blew past Falcons 45-37. Top scorers for Hurricanes were Jonathan Mills, 12 points, and Alden Pierre, 9. For Falcons, Kaifer Francis, 9 points, and Cleve Bellot, 8 points. In the other match, Old Schools finished 14 points ahead, winning 65-51 against X-Men. Levi Barron scored a formidable 26 points for Old School, assisted by Jenna Deschamps, Colbert, and Trevor Bernard, who contributed 10 points each. X-Men's top shooters were Alec Laza, 15 points, and Gino, 15. The league continues on Saturday in the Premier League at the Bird's Nest in Pichelet with E.H. Charles crossovers against the Thunderers at 7 p.m. At 9 in the evening, PSC Falcons will take on fast cash prowlers. The action moves to Portsmouth on Sunday, where Algin Pizza Hoyas will come up against Posse Vibrations Lighting in the under-17s at 6 p.m., followed by Intellico Security Raiders versus Police Sports Club at 8 p.m. in the Premier Division. Sports continues with this item where former president of Dominica Table Tennis Association and coordinator of Table Tennis Grand Prix 3.0 says he is expecting to make history for table tennis soon following the end of Saturday's Grand Prix here. Dominica is expected to have two teams in the under 11 and 13 categories making debut representation on the regional and international scene in August. Well, we're going to have the under 11s, and one of the reasons for having under 11s is because coming up in Jamaica in August, we have the under 11 tournament. Dominica have never once participated in the under 11 tournament in any Caribbean or regional, regional or international tournament. So it would be a big plus for Dominica to be participating in the under 11 and under 13 tournament. He says athletes are expected to be selected for the national team following the end of Saturday's Grand Prix. After this Grand Prix on Saturday is to select players for training. The mini cadet, which is the under 11 and under 13, will take part in Jamaica. We will be in Jamaica from the 22nd to 29th, but the seniors will be in Trinidad from the 14th to the 18th of August. Yeah, Dominica is hoping to fill these teams for this Caribbean championship. There have been two previous Grand Prix competitions with the first on March 25 and the second on April 29. Grand Prix 3.0 is carded for the Goodwill Primary School on Saturday at 10 in the morning. 
Back with more cricket, we can tell you that Wolf Security Point Michelle defeated Pidit Savan by 53 runs in the 2017 Big Edge Gifford Tusa Softball Cricket Tournament on Thursday. Point Michelle won the toss and elected to bat, totaling 134 all out. Kasim Peltier added 42 and Ishmael Lendor 30. Odell Hamilton took 4 for 20 and Mark Francis 2 for 16. Set 135 for victory, Pidit Savan folded on 81. Michael Moses was their highest scorer with the bat in that match with 34. Jamal Francis picked up 3 for 7. Meantime, the league continues on Saturday with one match. At 7 p.m., Colin McIntyre Trafalgar will come up against Kalinago Red Force at Pori Playing Field. Finally, eight matches are scheduled in the Guinea's knockout domino competition on Saturday. One case from Dodan will cope against Purple City Boys from Tarish Pit. Monzan from Mao will cope against Hits from Rozu. Dangerous Public Enemies will cope against Dolphin from Scottsdale. Metrix from Buffer State will cope against Layu. Rockers from Pebbles will cope against Babdad from Grand Four. Remix from Eggleston will cope against Rebels from Funkuli. Wake Up Stars from Postman will cope against North Players from Cassie Bruce. And Rivia Silk will cope against Tremors from Grand Bay. The games are carded for the Goodwill Primary School at 11 a.m. That's all the sports for now. Join us next time. Stay tuned for the weekend weather forecast. Good evening, viewers. Welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am Janel McPherson. Infrared satellite imagery today showed some low-level clouds across the central portion of the region today. Visible satellite imagery showed partly cloudy skies across Dominica today. Radar imagery indicated scattered showers across parts of the island chain this afternoon. The weather for tonight, partly cloudy to cloudy, and slightly hazy with some scattered showers. These conditions are expected to continue into tomorrow with temperatures peaking up to 32 degrees Celsius. Seas tomorrow moderate in open water, waves peaking up to 7 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution. Looking ahead for the next three days, a tropical wave is expected to move across the area on Saturday resulting in partly cloudy to cloudy skies and scattered showers. A second tropical wave is expected to move across the area by Sunday into Monday. As a result, an increase in cloudiness, showers, and possible isolated thunderstorms can be expected. Persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides, and falling rocks are advised to be vigilant and to exercise a caution. Throughout the Caribbean tomorrow, Partly cloudy, two cloudy skies, and scattered showers are expected throughout the island chain. On the international cities forecast, partly cloudy skies and some scattered showers are expected in New York. Clear skies for Miami and Beijing. Partly cloudy conditions are expected in London, and possible isolated thunderstorms for Caracas. Sunrise tomorrow at 5.34 a.m. and sunset at 6.31 p.m. For up-to-date weather information, please call our weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit our website at weather.gov.dm. Thank you for viewing and have a good weekend. To end the news, the headlines again. Parliamentary opposition leader pleased with Prime Minister's move to defer passing of amendments to election legislation. $7.2 million approved for overseas students' tuition fees and over $150,000 worth of hearing aids installed on Dominicans this week. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Kenny Williams. To all our viewers around the world, we thank you for watching. Have an awesome weekend.